Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Advanced Warfare In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the AE-4 Assault Rifle slash Energy Weapon. This is the new DLC weapon available to X1 and 360 users first. If they have the season pass, it'll be coming to PS4 soon enough. And it's definitely an unusual weapon. Very powerful, but fair. It has a couple of major downsides. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is me using it in Momentum on Riot, and then we're going to swap over to Momentum on Instinct. Going to be using it mostly long range, which is what I think it's good for. But on in-depth, let's do the stats before we get into opinions. It has the highest damage in the assault rifle class, dealing 34 damage per shot up close and decreasing to 30 at a distance. Now, I know some other assault rifles will deal 40 damage, blah, 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 but they all drop down to a 5-shot kill. This one maintains a 3-4-shot to four shot kill, and it's fully automatic, and as far as I, that's effectively the highest damage in the assault rifle class. This is an extremely high damage, very deadly weapon, it can get three shot kills or four shot kills at any range which makes it basically like an AK on steroids. The headshot multiplier is 15% or 1.15x. It'll help you a little bit at long ranges but it won't help you at all up close. No two shot headshots. The three shot kill range is this far and it's approximately twice that of the BAL or HBR range which means that it has a very good three shot kill range for assault rifles especially after the nerf. Matter of fact it has the best three shot kill range for assault rifles. While those damage values are excellent, it does have one massive downside, and that's its rate of fire. It's a very slow firing assault rifle. Matter of fact, the slowest firing assault rifle in Advanced Warfare at 450 RPM for the base version. That is considerably slower than normal. That's more like a light machine gun or like a marksman rifle if you have a bad trigger finger. It just shoots very, very slowly. The Widowmaker variant has increased accuracy but decreased rate of fire, and the decreased rate of fire is 420 RPM thus making it the slowest firing assault rifle, including variants, in the entire game. And yes, the marijuana joke was just too easy. I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I saw the 420 and I just had to do it because it's so early in the morning and my brain is derpy right now. One other bad thing about the AE-4 is that it cannot shoot through walls. If you don't believe me, here's a test with Cross on one side of the wall, and I'm pretty much just pumping bullets into it with the AE-4. I get no hit markers, immediately swap over to the bow, and I'm able to shoot through the wall and kill him like it's no problem. This gun has no ability to penetrate hard surfaces, and you will not be getting any wall bangs with it whatsoever. The recoil on the base version is moderate to low. I wanted to do a wall test or an accuracy test. Unfortunately, since it shoots lasers and not bullets, the paintball mode doesn't work, and the type of hit markers it leaves isn't really reflective of its actual recoil, but trust me, it kicks around kind of like the HBR, which makes it workable but not ideal. However, the Widowmaker has much better recoil, and if you stack a grip on top of that, it practically becomes a laser, so that's going to be what I end up recommending later on. The Widowmaker and grip is extremely, extremely accurate. One downside to your accuracy is that the AE-4 does sway a bit. It sways kind of like the MK-14 in this game, and as we've covered in previous in-depth episodes, other assault rifles have no sway. This one does have a little bit of sway, and it's constantly going, and it might make you miss some long-range shots. A little bit annoying, but definitely not a deal killer. The hip fire is not ideal. It has the exact same hip fire box, spread, cone, whatever you want to call it, as all of the other assault rifles, but because it shoots a little bit slow, and if you miss one or two of those shots, it's going to kill kind of slowly, and I really do not like the hip fire. I talked to Cross, who played with this gun more than I did, and he said the hip fire was great and it was really working for him, but I got very poor hip fire performance, kind of like a burst weapon or most any slow firing weapon in the game. The default iron sights are good. Uh, it is interesting to note that they are not misaligned. The bullet does not come out at the tip of the foresight, rather it comes out in between the two horizontal bars. I'll go ahead and take a screenshot of it and I'll show you exactly where the bullets come out. I'll put a little red dot on there so that it's very easy to see. It is easy to make that mistake and I do make it several times in this video, but overall the iron sights are quite workable. It's almost like getting a free red dot sight. Very nice. The normal amount of rounds that you can fire before the weapon overheats in fully automatic mode is 16. With the heatsink attachment, you can fire 20 rounds, so that's a sizable increase there. And I am usually using the heatsink, but do keep in mind that you can't full auto hose people like you can with other assault rifles because the gun will overheat. The cool off time, if you do overheat it, is extremely slow at 3.2 seconds. This is double or triple the reload time of most other assault rifles. 
effectively making it the slowest reloading gun in the game if it weren't for the unlimited ammo heatsink kind of thing. I'm not sure if I would really classify it as a reload. Run speed is 90%. That's the same as all the other assault rifles and it has all the rest of their handling attributes with aim down sights and strafing and sprint in and out and all those sort of things. It has normal assault rifle mobility characteristics. As for what I think about this gun, I think it's similar to a full auto MK14, but better. It has a really nice three shot kill range. It competes with the KF5 and the new ASM1 better than the BAL and the HBR. It shoots somewhat slowly, probably about how most people would shoot a marksman rifle if their trigger finger were on max. It's probably about average, you know, max trigger finger for console players. And it's very accurate. It kicks a lot less than these weapons, or at least the Widowmaker variant does. The normal variant does have a tendency to kick a little bit. And the overall handling properties are nice. It kind of comes with a free red dot sight, so I'm very happy about that. I think it's best used on large maps and by players with good aim. It's not really a close quarters combat because at three shots you can use it there, but I don't feel that it's ideal. I spent a lot of time getting melted by the ASM-1 and KF-5 when I tried to challenge submachine gun users, so that's not a good idea at all. And if you have good aim, you you can absolutely smack people with this gun. It is very, very deadly for players with good aim. And my recommended loadout is pretty simple. I recommend the Widowmaker variant because of the increase in accuracy. Even though the rate of fire goes down to the lowest in the game, I feel that the accuracy is worth it. Stacking on the foregrip only further improves the accuracy, and the heat sink is a must. In this gameplay that you're seeing, I'm also rocking a stock. The stock is very nice. It's something that I'm comfortable with, and I kind of aim with the left stick like a noob. But really, if you're good, you can probably probably just use this setup and use the other points somewhere else. Well guys, that's all for this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it and you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to check out the previous episode, which is on supply drop stats and odds. And the next one, yes, I promise, is going to be on the SAC3. I've been putting that off forever. I've had all these other sort of in-depth episodes come up, but yes, SAC3 is coming. And as always, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.